How you doing? My name is Tom Willem, physical therapist from Apex Orthopedic Rehabilitation. Uh, today we're going to talk about some very simple uh, rotator cuff strengthening exercises that can really help you with just general upper body strengthening. We're going to give you a series of exercises you can do with bands. There's other ones that you can do with dumbbells or cable, um, or cable systems. We're going to show you a few that you can do just to kind of get you started, okay? Good rotator cuff functioning is pivotal to improving your bench press overhead movements, even deadlift. If we can get um, those muscles to work a little bit better, you're going to be better in a lot of movements in the gym um, across the board. So the rotator cuff, um, they use a series of four muscles. Realize we can't truly isolate out one muscle completely. You know, there's other muscles that are activated oftentimes doing what we consider rotator cuff exercises. We're just trying to pick ones that hopefully make the rotator cuff work a little harder so we kind of emphasize that particular area or that particular uh, series of muscles. Okay, so we have, uh, I like to kind of talk about two different groups that help with overhead function. You have muscles that attach from the spine or the rib cage, and these muscles come from here to the scapula. Now those are kind of the scapula stabilizers, which we'll talk on another video. This is kind of the foundation. Uh, the rotator cuff muscle is a series of four muscles, um, and there's the uh, supraspinatus across the top here, and it goes into this little groove here above our uh, shoulder blade or scapula. It attaches to the humeral head here. Then you have the infraspinatus and teres minor that come through here and also attach here. And there's one deep cut up inside here. Don't mind the little, little <laughs> beads here. On the inside here of the scapula that is called the subscapularis. Those are a series of four muscles that essentially keep this very shallow joint seated. So this, for the, so this, this particular joint, the shoulder joint right here, the glenohumeral joint, is very shallow. So the rotator cuff is supposed to help it seat, kind of stay in that very shallow socket so it doesn't shift and bounce around. That's why you'll, you'll see a lot more problems with shoulder dislocations, you know, um, because of that shallow socket. It really relies on a lot of other structures to keep it stable and keep good quality movement. The great side is the shoulder has tremendous mobility. There's a lot of different directions you can move your shoulder, so it needs that very shallow socket to accommodate those movements, okay? One little tidbit to keep in mind, we're going to show you these rotator cuff exercises, is realize that if you have loss of motion, like you don't have enough flexibility and essentially then therefore mobility, you can't get the shoulder or the arm in certain positions, even when you do the rotator cuff strengthening, you still may not be able to do certain movement patterns as well. So getting a good screen as far as your mobility, make sure you have good range of motion in all the different directions before you strengthen in those new directions is pretty important. And that could be the missing link if you want to have difficulty with these exercises or actually pain. Okay, the first one we want to emphasize, we want to feel, this is a, a one of the lighter kind of what we call bands that we use here in the clinic. You can go lighter or heavier, but I want you to feel reasonably comfortable and take it through a full range of motion. So I kind of want to have it so you're kind of grasping it like so, a thumb up position. Not so much straight ahead, but more kind of off to the side like this, okay, and then back down. Okay, so thumb up, full range of motion, and then back down. I want to feel the tension starting right about from your side, right about from your thigh, okay? If it's too loose and it's starting here, I prefer it to be more tensioning at the start when you first go into your movement pattern. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to have a little towel underneath our side just to keep the arm a little bit away from the side, especially if you're coming off of injury. If you're a healthy individual, it's less essential. Essentially, what you want to do is you want to put your arm like so. You want to feel the tension starting right about here. You're going to come all the way out, pause, and then back in. Remember, the, the out phase, or the concentric phase, they call it, is important. That's a phase where you're getting a shortening of the muscles good. But also realize I want to see it come back and good return. So one, two, three, out. Sometimes we'll even do a little hold of three seconds at the very end, any of these exercises. And then one, two, three, a little bit longer in the back, okay? Uh, this band can be a little higher too, just to change the angle. I probably put it a little bit higher actually, um, so the angle isn't as severe, okay? Uh, eventually, you don't even have to put the roll underneath there. Um, you can do it just from the side. Some people will put their hand like so, and place it out like so, and come back in. Okay, the next one, we're going to work on this same, instead of doing this pattern, we're going to bring it up into a higher position. So we're going to work on, um, they call the external rotators, more in this upright position. It also works other parts of the rotator cuff as well. We can't completely isolate it. So you're going to be your hand like so. 
Sometimes I'll place um, a TheraBall or something underneath here or I'll rest it on a chair. And, or you can even place your hand like so. So you're gonna bring your arms up, pause, and slowly back down. All the way up, pause, and back down. A nice variation to this is to kind of go through this motion and then punch to the ceiling. Keep a good alignment through your back. So this is a rough framework. We basically want you to do the series of exercises that we show you. We want to get a high repetition in the early stages. So two or three times a week, we're going to ask you to do these exercises, two or three sets of maybe 10 to 15. We're trying to get that rotator cuff to start firing with the idea that it's just not, it's not firing as efficiently. So we're trying to wake it up like jump starting a car. So we want to get high repetition in two or three times a week. Sometimes we have to pair it back a little less for people that really start getting a good firing and change the frequency, how often uh, during the week that we're doing these. But that's a general recommendation in the early stages. And then once you get started, there's more advanced um, uh, you know, structuring as far as how your program is, okay? And also we have to consider what other lifts you're doing so we get the most out of rot rotator cuff. And we also don't overdo it or underdo it. Last one, we're going to put our hands like so, about, about shoulder width apart, maybe a little more narrow. And you're essentially going to pull your arms all the way back together and then back out. And we can also, a little variation to that is just turning it a little bit out so you get a little more rotation to the humerus, all the way back out, and then back in. Relax your shoulders. Make sure you're not shrugging as you're doing this. All the way back and back in. Remember, a little discomfort with these exercises is all right. As long as it goes away pretty rapidly within, you know, five or ten minutes, a little discomfort is okay, mild. Um, if it goes beyond, beyond that level, then we may want to either decrease the level or it's not appropriate exercise for you. So keep that in mind. Sometimes as you first start the program, you'll even notice some delayed onset of muscle soreness, which occurs 24 to 48 hours. And it feels more muscular. It shouldn't be significant. But sometimes that'll occur the first few times that you do them until you get used to them. Hey, I hope this helps you out. I hope it helps you with some of your other lifting. It's really essential. Sometimes even doing a couple of these exercises prior to your main lifts, just to wake, almost as a warm up, is a great way to use these exercises as well. Very high repetition, very comfortable, and we build from there. Hope this helps you out. If you like this, you can subscribe to our channel, turn on the notifications so you hear about future videos, and like it or put a comment in there. Uh, we'd love to hear from you and a couple other. There's lots of exercises out there that are out there for rotator cuff and scapular strengthening. These are just a few that you can use.